Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the second edition of the Forefront ED by National Mega Region, a virtual panel with its leaders. My name is Victor Gamas. I'm the director of the Mexican Business Council for Trade, Investment, and Technology, COMSE, in Sonora, and I will be hosting today's event. During this event, authorities of the Forefront ED by National Mega Region, which encompasses Yuma County, Arizona, Imperial County, California, San Luis Rio Colorado, Sonora, and Mexicali, Baja California, will highlight the assets of this mega region. This panel will also serve as a platform for dialogue on the strategies implemented to address the current challenges that have impacted us all. Buenas tardes, bienvenidos a la segunda edición del panel virtual con los líderes de la mega región binacional Forefront ED. Mi nombre es Víctor André Gamas Mayer, director del Consejo Empresarial Mexicano del Comercio Exterior, Inversión y Tecnología, COMSE, en Sonora, y seré el moderador de este evento el día de hoy. Autoridades de la mega región binacional Forefront ED, la cual incluye el condado de Yuma, Arizona, el condado de Imperial, California, San Luis Río, Colorado, Sonora, y Mexicali, Baja California, promoverán los principales activos de dicha mega región. Asimismo, este panel servirá como plataforma para el diálogo sobre las estrategias implementadas para enfrentar los retos actuales que han impactado a todos los sectores. I would like to describe the format of this panel. Each panelist will speak on their preferred language. Simultaneous interpretation service is available during the entire panel at the bottom part of your screen. Just click on the interpretation button and then click on the language of your preference, either English or Spanish. Cada panelista dirigirá su mensaje en el idioma de su preferencia. El servicio de interpretación simultánea estará disponible durante todo el panel en el botón de Interpretation, ubicado en la parte inferior de la pantalla. Para habilitar este servicio, por favor darle clic en el idioma de su preferencia, ya sea inglés o español. The Q&A section is, is open to the public and it will take place after the dialogue. Please ask your questions on the Q&A section of this platform. La sesión de preguntas y respuestas será abierta al público y se realizará antes de terminar el panel. Favor de realizar sus preguntas en la sección de Q&A de esta plataforma. I would like to introduce the Honorary Douglas Nichols Mayor of Yuma, Arizona, and Chairman of Forefront ED, who will address some welcoming remarks. Mayor Nichols, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Victor. And it's great to have everybody uh, in one meeting. Even We are still virtual, but it's pretty convenient to be able to do it this way. However, you know, the, the pandemic did a pretty good job of, of uh, trying to keep us from interacting. And I want to just mention um, Nazar and his uh, efforts to make sure we have panels like this throughout the whole pandemic to help keep the region together. But for me, it's always been one of those things that um, I'd rather shake your hand, uh, meet you face to face. And so uh, we're getting there. And this panel is perfectly timed, in my opinion, to, to re-kick off those kind of uh, engagements. So um, in Forefront ED is, is really that that effort to uh, bring together our partners, our neighbors, our friends uh, that live throughout the region where we have historically done a lot of work together um, and talk about that in a very kind of coordinated way where uh, we represent the four sub-regions in this mega region, um, the strengths that we each have and how we can complement each other, uh, how we can build the region together and uh, that's what's great about this panel today is we'll be able to, to talk to the leaders throughout the region and talk about the future. Where are we going to go? How are we going to get there? Um, what have we dealt with the past that we've learned that we can uh, build upon? So 
with that, I'd just like to welcome everyone. Um, normally, I'd go through every uh, dignitary, but I think we're going to get to that in a minute. But I'd like really like to thank um, fellow mayors uh, and those that are, are here today to present and uh, all the participants in engaging in our mega region as um, we come out of this pandemic stronger and uh, we learn new ways to work together and uh, new opportunities that exist. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Nichols, for those welcoming remarks. I would then uh, pass on to introduce each panelist. The first, of course, is Douglas Nichols, Mayor of Yuma, Arizona, who earned a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering from Arizona State University and continued his post-baccalaureate studies in transportation engineering. His professional experience includes chairman and founder of Four Funny D, chairman of the Yuma Multiversity Campus, chairman of the Colorado River Mayors Association, president and owner of Core Engineering Group, an active Rotarian, among others. The second is Cecilia McCullough. She is a mayor of the town of Welton, who has served on town council for 12 years as mayor for seven. During her tenure as a mayor, she has helped define a vision and a mission statement that exemplifies the town council's vision for the future. Her professional experience includes member of the Forefront ED governing group, board member of the Yuma Metropolitan Planning Organization, board member of the Western Arizona Council of Governments, board member of the Greater Yuma Economic Development Council Corporation, active member of the Yuma County Chamber of Commerce, among others. The third is Gerardo Jerry Anaya, mayor of Somerton, Arizona. He earned a bachelor's degree in engineering from Arizona State University. His professional experience includes member of the Forefront ED governing group, assistant director of engineering at the city of Yuma, founding member of the ASU El Diablito alumni chapter, council member of the city of Somerton in 2007, and the city's vice mayor, among other. The fourth is Gerardo Jerry Sanchez. He is a mayor of San Luis, Arizona, who earned a bachelor's degree in microbiology and immunology from the University of Arizona, an advanced degree in medical technology from the University of Arizona, and a bachelor's of medical science from Midwestern University in Glendale, Arizona. His professional experience includes member of the Forefront ED governing group, council member of the San Luis since 2008, board member of the Yuma Metropolitan Planning Organization, active participant in the US-Mexico Border Mayors Association, as well as a, being a physician's assistant among other recognitions. The fifth is Santos Gonzalez Yescas, Alcalde de San Luis Río, Colorado, Sonora, tomó posesión de su cargo como alcalde en 2018 y fue reelegido en 2021. Es un empresario, contador público y político mexicano. Su experiencia profesional incluye siendo director de una promotora del grupo financiero Inbursa, forma parte del Consejo Nacional del Grupo Financiero Inbursa, y es miembro activo del Club Rotario y de la Asociación Municipal de Softball. En Amigos y amigas, queridos y queridas, por supuesto. No nos conozco físicamente, pero ya lo siento así, como amigos y amigas. Y claro, y claro que lo somos, porque tenemos un objetivo común. Somos presidentes municipales y presidentas. Somos alcaldes, somos responsables de una sociedad. Debo decirles que no saben lo que me duele no estar allí, sé que la están disfrutando, sé que la están pasando bien, los envidio, allí hubiera querido estar. Vamos arriba, vamos hacia adelante, somos esta asociación de municipios que nace, bueno, que ya nació, pero que ahora se formaliza físicamente y que sé y todos sabemos que vamos a lograr muchísimas cosas. Mi corazón está con ustedes. Hasta pronto. En representación de Norma Bustamante, alcaldesa de Mexicali, Baja California, tenemos la dicha de contar con la presencia del ingeniero Víctor Hugo Delgado. 
I would then also like to introduce Javier Moreno, mayor of Calexico, California, who holds a doctorate in management with an emphasis in organizational leadership and a master's of science in criminal justice and homeland security. His professional experience includes board member of the League of California Cities, board member of the Imperial County Transportation Committee, board member of the Southern California Association of Governments, president of the Calexico Wellness Center and binational academic liaison for the San Diego State University Research Foundation, among others. Finally, and last but not least, is Cheryl Viegas Walker. She is the mayor of El Centro, California and a graduate of the University of Washington. About Forefront ED, I would like to go to a short presentation on the basics of Forefront ED. Forefront ED is four states, two nations to make one powerful region. Forefront ED was created in 2014 by a group of mayors, Yuma County supervisors, and leaders from the United States and Mexico region. The governing group includes the mayors and city administrators of the city of Yuma, City of San Luis, Town of Welton, and City of Somerton, as well as the Yuma County Supervisor. The Forefront ED focus areas are economic development, infrastructure, tourism, and education. The Forefront ED by National Mega Region covers, in California, the cities of Calexico and El Centro, in Arizona, the cities of Yuma, Somerton, San Luis, Town of Welton, and the Cocopa and Quechan tribes. In Sonora, Mexico, the city of San Luis, Rio Colorado, and in Baja California, the city of Mexicali. Thank you. I would like to ask the Forefront ID governing group, what is the origin of Forefront ID and its efforts? Um, uh, Victor, I'll, I'll start off. Uh, it was definitely a group effort. Um, this was in early in 2014. Uh, the mayors in Yuma County were sitting around and we were talking about a variety of topics, but it really became apparent that the engagement we have across the border, um, all the borders, the Mexico border with Arizona and the California border with Arizona, uh, is a very natural, organic thing that happens, but we never really had a good way to describe it. How, what does that mean? What was this this thing to define the region, um, to kind of be that framework that we could all work within? And so we all agreed that this would be uh, a good effort to to undertake to try to find a way to you know put those demographics and those um, those efforts into a holistic approach. So whether it's job creation or education or tourism, we all have a, a greater understanding and a, and, a, and a vehicle at which we can work through. And it's been a growing um, effort over the years, uh, adding you know, some of our um, different subcommittees to talk about different things as they arise. But uh, it's really about promoting the, the area and the quality of life. Um, but the existing one that we already, already naturally organically happens in, in this region. And so uh, that, that's where it, kind of where it came from and um, in the, the overall philosophy of uh, doing things like this and the many other things that have been happening over the years. Thank you, Mayor Nichols. Uh, in 2017, Forfani D won the Doug, Donald E. Hunter Excellence in Economic Development Planning Award by the American Planning Association. What does this recognition represent for the governing group members? And what are some of the biggest accomplishments that Forefront ED has done in order to deserve this award? If Mayor Nichols would like to respond or anybody else in the Zoom. I actually think Mayor Sanchez might be a little more brushed up on this one, um, if, if he is. 
Uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, I just want to make sure Doug uh, got a word in, and I just want to make sure that uh, this is this this has been a group effort. And the thing is, one of the things that uh, uh, to add to what Mayor Nichols said was uh, uh, we were looking when we started Forefront EDD, we were we were always talking about uh, it's really nice when you're looking going out and actually promoting your region, you're actually your town, but it's even stronger when you actually promote the region. And that was, 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 that's one of the key features. We're always competing or trying to bring jobs to our community, but uh, what, what actually is more efficient is when you work together with the regional mayors, with, uh, with our counterparts in Mexico and California, and actually you become a stronger region. You offer a more, uh, uh, let's, see, let's see here, for example, if a business wants to start, you're talking about a whole region, we're talking about multiple cities. And so I think that had to do with the with the award and the recognition working together and making a difference does make a difference because i can compete uh, as an individual city but i but we all recognize as a region as working with different mayors we're a much stronger uh much stronger economic power compared to other communities who are just one city one town so i think that had to do a lot with it and the ability to work with the different mayors we all have agendas, it's understandable, but the thing is working as a region, we become more efficient. Working as a region, we become more effective. And I think that was the main purpose why we were recognized. And I, and I really am grateful for this opportunity and having the, uh, the mayors uh, who, were, who initially started and, and continue growing. So it is something very positive for the region. And of course, it was an honor to be recognized and uh, we will continue working together uh, as a unit, as a region, which is very important. Thank you, Mayor Sanchez. ¿Cómo se pueden mejor integrar las comunidades del Condado de Yuma, el Condado de Imperial, San Luis Rio Colorado y Mexicali? And what does the Forefront ED binational mega region contribute to the rest of the development of the greater U.S.-Mexico border region? Uh, I don't know if uh, Mayor McCullough, Mayor Anaya, Alcalde Santos Gonzalez, if you have uh, any anything to offer. I'll have to say something real quick if I can beforehand. Uh, one of the things about each individual town or region is they offer unique opportunities for different businesses. And the thing is, what San Luis de Corral can offer is, is, is probably something different than my city can offer. We're only a population of 35,000 according to the census, but we're more like close to 39,000. But uh, there's, there's communities like Yuma, for example, there's a lot of potential, a lot of business investment going on in Yuma also. Summerton also and Welton is also growing, but we need to be together. Uh, for example, El Centro uh, can offer something different to a region. So uh, for example, or Mexicali, uh, Baja California, that's another region that can offer. So working together, I think we can promote each community stronger, better. And I think uh, people are always looking, investors are always, foreign investors are always looking for places where you have such unity. And I think we do have it here. And I think uh, promoting each individual community uh, as a region is probably one of the best thing we can do uh, now wise in this world economy. Thank you. I completely agree, Mayor. Uh, Ingeniero Delgado. Sí, muy buenos, muy buenos días a todos. Eh, con el gusto de saludarlos y una, una disculpa de parte de nuestra alcaldesa Norma Bustamante por no poder atender el día de hoy. Pero eh, sí quiero agregar un poco, el, la, el, para nosotros es muy importante el hecho de tener la oportunidad de poder de podernos reunirnos con ustedes el día de hoy. La, la mega región que, en la que se está trabajando definitivamente nos ofrece una, una ventaja muy económica, muy grande, lo cual, como bien los, bien los alcaldes de, de, de Yuma y este Mayor Gerardo Sánchez lo mencionó, el, el esfuerzo tiene que ser de equipo, el, todos tenemos que trabajar para crecer, cada una de las ciudades tendrá sus habilidades y condiciones tanto tecnológicas, educativas, económicas, eh, que puedan ofrecer. Y la ciudad de Mexicali, eh, con una población quizá un poco mayor a la de ustedes, podemos eh, tecnológicamente y educativamente y, y, eh, representar y apoyar las actividades que nos competen a cada quien. 
Eh, queremos, darles la, queremos darnos la oportunidad de poder eh, trabajar de la mano de cada uno de ustedes. Eh, tenemos un, cada, un, cada uno de nosotros tenemos nuestras oportunidades y nuestras habilidades y creo yo que el trabajo en conjunto de cada una de las regiones podrá poner a esta región del otro lado del mundo siempre para poder este, dar la oportunidad de seguir creciendo. Gracias. Muchas gracias, ingeniero. Muy bien. If I could just comment very quickly, thank you. I reiterate But, you know, Welton is a small town. We have a population of about 3,000. And uh, we have really benefited from the collaboration with the other mayors and certainly celebrate the extension of the region collaborating together. Um, we just, I just don't imagine what I could do without the friendships that I've developed with other mayors and the relationships that have really benefited our town and the community as a whole. So thank you. Thank like you, to, Mayor. Uh, Victor, I'd like to offer an example, um, if I could. Um, one of the focuses is education. And uh, we've signed MOUs uh, between the three Arizona State Universities, uh, the local community college, as well as uh, I think it's 17 is the number of, of universities in Mexico that we've established collaboration with. And where that has come to fruit has been Uh, there was a need for nursing students and actual nurses in a human community. And that was predates COVID. So you can imagine how that need has grown. Uh, and the relationships we were able to establish with some of the, the universities in Mexicali created um, the ability to have some of those nursing students come from Mexicali and actually uh, work and, and work, finish their education here in the Yuma area. And so that's one way we're able to collaborate in a real beneficial way um, that benefits both, both communities quite well, but really overall strengthens the region as our hospitals serve more than just one city, right? They serve the whole communities. And so uh, from that perspective, that's just a, a simple, small example, but it, it's a very um, a very effective example on what that, how it benefits the whole mega region, as well as just the border region uh, throughout the uh, the Southern border or the Northern border uh, here in, uh, in Arizona and California. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, to pass on to the following section, we'll talk about more concrete Uh, areas in which the, the groups uh, and the different cities that participate in this region have collaborated on issues such as energy efficiency, infrastructure, ports, etc. Before I go on and ask those questions, I would like to transition to a short video on the assets of the Forefront ED by National Mega Region. Assets of the Forefront ED by National Mega Region. 90% of all the leafy vegetables grown in the United States from November through March are grown in and around the Yuma area. To put this in perspective, the Yuma area is home to nine salad plants that produce bagged lettuce and salad mixes. During peak production months, each of those plants processes more than 2 million pounds of lettuce per day. San Luis Rio Colorado is the date capital of Mexico. 70% of the date production in Mexico comes from San Luis Rio Colorado. Mexicali is the aerospace capital of Mexico. This industry has been established in Mexicali for almost 50 years. There are 97 industries in Baja California, 58 in Sonora, 52 in Chihuahua, and 50 in Querétaro. Imperial County is on the way to becoming the renewable capital of the world with geothermal, wind, solar, among others. Thank you. Now, starting off with the first question for Mayor Javier Moreno. Calexico has a rail connection with Mexicali, mainly for the transportation of goods from the maquiladora industry. Given the relevance and importance that quality infrastructure has had under the current global supply chain crisis and the recently signed bipartisan infrastructure law in the United States, this competitive advantage that Calexico and Mexicali offer has a, a lot of opportunities for businesses in the region. Could you please expand on the opportunities there are for these companies due to the connectivity that your port of entry provides? 
Yes, good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, we, just a little we brief introduction. It, it, Calexico is, a, is a, uh, a key proximity to Mexicali. Um, and so we, we're in a position to, the city is in a position to take advantage of all future of first better. Uh, in, in, uh, it capitalizes on trade, commerce, culture, and energy. It comes uh, with unique uh, status as an international gateway uh, community. Uh, we're also a key lo uh, location in lifestyle uh, will fuel inevitable growth uh, in population as well as local economy, creating employment uh, and economic opportunities. Um, um, <clears throat> in terms of the uh, strategic for border uh, site, uh, U.S. Department of Transportation Opportunity Zone uh, designation is in Calexico. Um, we are proud to, uh, to incentivize the Valmas by, by having an opportunity to zone uh, this, uh, this designation. Uh, opportunity zones are designed to spur economic development by providing tax benefits to investors. Investors can deter um, tax uh, on any pr prior gains in invested <coughs> in a qualified opportunity fund until the earlier <coughs> of date in which the investment in a qualified um, uh, opportunity fund is it's sold or exchanged um, or December 31st, 2026. Um, so we are in a, in a unique opportunity um, to fund investment in our community, um, um, <clears throat> which we, we've held longer than five years. Uh, there is a 10% <clears throat> exclusion of defer uh, gain. Uh, if held for more than 70, uh, held for more than 70 years, the 10% becomes 15%. And secondly, um, if the investor holds the investment in the Opportunity Fund uh, in basis of qualified pretty fund. So the foreign trade um, zone, Calexico officer offers uh, the benefit of being in foreign trade zone um, 257. Uh, our, our city is part of the Imperial Valley Foreign Trade Zone, JPA. <clears throat> it is an advisory board uh, designated by Imperial County to promote and manage foreign trade zone programs. Some of these include, <clears throat> some, some uh, key benefits include um, improved inventory management, uh, automated <clears throat> record keeping and <clears throat> documented storage, increased visibility of the supply chain, improved cash flow. Uh, we'd also have uh, improved company compliance and <clears throat> lessen the U.S. regulatory agency requirements for, um, <clears throat> for re-export. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to pass the word on to Ingeniero Delgado, uh, Victor Hugo Delgado. Un dato curioso es que Mexicali es la única capital de un estado ubicada en la frontera, tanto en México como en Estados Unidos. Al mismo tiempo, su ciudad se ha posicionado como un líder en la educación superior en el noroeste de México. ¿Cuál es su opinión sobre la importancia de contar con un buen sistema educativo? para el desarrollo de Mexicali y desde luego de la mega región. ¿Cómo se ha preparado su ciudad para enfrentar la demanda de trabajos en la industria 4.0 con carreras especializadas en sus universidades y escuelas técnicas? Sí, muy, muy buenos días de nuevo. Eh, fíjate que ese es un tema importante y ahorita lo comentaban de la capacitación eh, y eh, es, es uno de los temas importantes para el desarrollo de cualquier área eh, eh, demográfica y económica. Mexicali se ha considerado desde, los últimos, desde muchos años atrás una ciudad que ha, ha trabajado fuertemente en la, en la capacitación de su gente. Tan así es que tenemos 16 universidades en la ciudad, algunas de ellas públicas y muchas de ellas privadas. Y, y un dato curioso que se ha estado presentando es que eh, bien lo dices, la única capital de Estado a, a través de la frontera. Eh, nos hemos dedicado a preparar a nuestra gente y eso ha sido la parte importante por la cual Mexicali ha sido uno de los temas eh, considerados para su crecimiento. Eh, tan es así que hay algunas empresas de corporativos grandes extranjeros que el, su, su máximo eh, esfuerzo, su máximo recurso ha sido tanto la mano de obra especializada como técnica. Y una de las partes importantes que se ha tocado también es que ha habido una integración muy importante entre, entre lo, el empresariado, eh, la comunidad y las instituciones educativas a través de los comités de vinculación. 
lo cual ha generado un estatus una importante porque se ha estado trabajando junto con, con la industria, en este caso tanto la industria nacional como la industria de exportación, para preparar a sus gentes en, en un nivel tan, tan, tan importante. Eh, y ahorita lo mencionaban, eh, Mexicali se ha considerado una de las ciudades más importantes en la industria aeroespacial, pero nada, no nada más está creciendo la industria aeroespacial. La industria aeroespacial es una parte importante. Ahora la industria médica, a raíz de la pandemia, ha considerado la industria de la ciudad de Mexicali como un tema importante. Eh, también eh, la industria automotriz. Y eso lo que nos hace a nosotros es trabajar fuertemente con las instituciones educativas para asegurar que la mano de obra calificada y especializada esté al alcance de todos ellos. Pero también trabajamos eh, con, eh, con las regiones importantes como la que estamos nosotros trabajando junto con ustedes. Es el hecho de tener la oportunidad de poder ayudar para preparar más gente, así como lo mencionaba el mayor de Yuma, el hecho de preparar gente en el área médica. Quiero decirles que la Escuela de Medicina y la Escuela de Enfermería de la, de la universidad pública es una de las más reconocidas a nivel nacional y ello pues nos ha dado la oportunidad de también de estar a un nivel considerable en este aspecto, pero no nada más en el aspecto médico, sino también eh, lo mencionaban ahorita, ¿no? en el aspecto técnico eh, de, de, en el área de ingeniería, por ejemplo Son una de las, eh, tenemos instituciones privadas y, y públicas que están a un nivel considerable de competencia y que están trabajando fuertemente para hacer trabajos en conjunto junto con la industria, junto con las empresas y junto con la ciudad. Nosotros como ciudad estamos completamente convencidos que la mejor forma de poder hacer participar en un desarrollo económico como el que esperamos todos hacer es trabajar en conjunto ciudad, gobierno, eh, empresarios y las instituciones educativas. De tal manera que tendremos las tres hélices en conjunto para trabajar en equipo, y lo hemos visto, eh, hemos visto otras regiones de desarrollo que han sido total, un total éxito, y ese éxito nos ha, nos ha hecho el trabajo en comunidad como el que estamos tratando de hacer el esfuerzo el día de hoy. Creo yo que el, el trabajo en equipo, este, desde las instituciones educativas como la comunidad y gobierno, van a hacer que este, esta mega región crezca. De acuerdo. Muchas gracias, ingeniero. Uh, Mayor Gerardo Sanchez, knowing that, that the San Luis Port of Entry is the second busiest port along the Arizona-Sonora uh, border, your administration has prioritized modernization of this port following a plan already approved by the U.S. federal government. Could you please provide us with more details on this project at hand? And can you also speak to the importance of investing in the modernization of ports infrastructure through a binational lens? Finally, what has been said about the implementation of digital processes and joint inspections at this port of entry? Thank you, Victor. I just want to mention that uh, uh, the port of entry of San Luis, we have two. We actually, actually have port of entry one and port of entry two. Port of entry one was actually the last time they did any kind of adjustments or uh, infrastructure uh, uh, was in 19, what is it, 1984. So we have eight lanes. Uh, with eight lanes, we process uh, probably uh, nationwide, we are the fourth busiest in regards to private and pedestrian traffic. Uh, we also have a port of entry too, which is basically commercial. So it basically took a couple of years, close to nine years to actually get the funding necessary for our port of entry one. Uh, in uh, 2020 fiscal year, we were able to guarantee 152 million uh, uh, dollars, but it was, it was, it wasn't enough. We were still lacking 90 million. A year later, uh, the cost of, of, of construction jumped to 147 million, which were recently approved in the infrastructure package. We're talking about an investment close to $300 million to modernize our port of entry. We're talking about, uh, 16 lanes compared to eight. This will make the city of San Luis port of entry one, the biggest, uh, uh, a land port in, in actually in the state of Arizona. So we're looking at a complete dynamic change in the way we do business, in the way we promote tourism, in the way uh, traffic is a big issue. But also I'd like to commend our counterparts in Mexico. For example, they're also gonna invest close to $31 million into a new facility. This is a process gonna, probably gonna take between four to five years. We're talking about hundreds of jobs, hundreds of people, of engineers, staying locally, 
and actually uh, creating jobs. So that's, that's, that's a big positive. In regards to looking at it as a region, as an investment, I see the comments that, 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 that have come out that says, why, why are we spending $300 million in a port of entry? Well, let me tell you about regarding the numbers, okay? Normally, for example, uh, Mexican residents who cross our ports in the state of Arizona spend between nine and million dollars per day in regards to goods. Okay, that's per day in the state of Arizona. That's close to a two billion dollar investment that occurs from our counterparts, from from our brothers and sisters coming from across the border. So, three hundred million dollar investments is nothing compared to the benefit of two billion dollars that come into the Arizona economy. So. And of course, it impacts, it impacts both the U.S. and also Mexico. So we're also talking about uh, homeland security. We're talking about infrastructure. We're going to have the state-of-the-art facility with all the, uh, the, the most advanced technology available for, 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 for uh, homeland security. So uh, it, it's, it's a big uh, accomplishment. Also, uh, the city of, of Douglas will be receiving another $400 million for a two-part infrastructure. Uh, invest. Yes. So the state of Arizona, and uh, with the help with the federal government, have actually now investing in our ports. So it's a big impact for us. The other thing is about our port of entry too, is uh, the dual inspection. This is where CBP officers and aduana officers are jointly in the same building inspecting the same cargo. Beforehand, they would actually inspect them in Mexico first. They would have to unload and load them again come back to the U.S. and the same process again. But now we have the dual, both U.S. and Mexican aduana inspectors in one facility, making it more feasible, guaranteeing homeland security, and making it more feasible for the, for the investors. For the, for the investors, it makes them, it's more logistically proper. And the thing is, and that's how a CBP working with aduanas has made a big difference. So for us, Infrastructure investment has been and will be continue one of the big catalysts for economic development in the region and also for homeland security. So in, I, I cut it down, but uh, I'm very excited. Construction should, should begin uh, the following year. And so I'm also very excited and very grateful with, uh, with uh, uh, Presidente Municipal Santos uh, Gonzalez Yescas for all the work he has done. And, and for the region, and it's just amazing. And I also want to thank our, the uh, uh, mayors from the region for being with us, Yuma County, the governor, the Arizona delegation, both Republicans and Democrats working together to make a difference. So this, this, this is something that's going to impact not only the city of San Luis, Yuma County, but also the region. Thank you very much, Mayor. And now to follow up with your counterpart in San Luis Rio Colorado, voy a pasar a preguntarle al alcalde Santos González de, sobre eh, el, el mismo tema eh, relacionado a aduanas. El administrador general de aduanas, Horacio Duarte Olivares, acaba de venir a Sonora a reunirse con diferentes actores en el estado, acompañado por el gobernador de Sonora, el doctor Alfonso Durazo Montaño anunciaron en conjunto una inversión de 250 millones de dólares para la modernización de aduanas en el Estado, lo cual es parte de un plan de inversión del presidente de la República de más de 500 mil millones de pesos para las aduanas del país. Este importante anuncio seguramente traerá grandes beneficios para San Luis Río Colorado. ¿Nos, nos pudiera, por favor, platicar más sobre los detalles de dicho proyecto y para cuándo se espera tener avances al respecto. Adicionalmente, ¿qué significa la modernización de aduanas sonorenses en cuanto a las oportunidades que puedan llegar para la región de San Luis Río Colorado? Gracias. Sí, saludo a todos con mucho afecto a mis amigos y compañeros eh, mayores, alcaldes de esta mega región. Y yo coincido en todo totalmente con el mayor y amigo Gerardo Sánchez. Sí, y efectivamente, a finales de agosto, principio de septiembre, por aquí estuvieron en San Río Colorado, tanto en ese momento el gobernador electo Alfonso Durazo Montaño, y también estuvo el eh, administrador general de aduanas, Horacio, el, el maestro Horacio Duarte, eh, y nos visitaron para darnos a conocer inicialmente 
que iba a ser una inversión de 550 millones. Y eh, ayer estuvo con nosotros eh, Carlos Morales, que es eh, de los responsables de la infraestructura a nivel eh, este, nacional de aduanas, donde ya nos confirma 626 millones de pesos para la aduana de San Luis exclusivamente, la aduana, la construcción de los nuevos edificios, de los accesos, y nosotros pondremos también eh, este, una parte de donación de dos calles importantes, ¿no? Para que se haga el recinto fiscal eh, adecuada, adecuadamente. Entonces, estamos hablando, como decía también eh, eh, nuestro amigo Gerardo Sánchez, de 31 millones 300 mil dólares, poco más eh, de esa cantidad para esta inversión. Y claro que yo les puedo decir, como lo hemos estado cacareando, así lo decimos coloquialmente en México, los trabajos que nos está apoyando tanto el gobierno del Estado como el gobierno este, eh, federal, que va a ser eh, un antes y un después con esta aduana para San Luis Río Colorado. Y no hay que olvidar que San Luis eh, ahorita en este momento tiene un momento extraordinario, válgame la redundancia, en obra pública, porque no nada más va a ser la aduana, también estamos hablando de un periférico o libramiento, ¿no? Eh, si se hace el periférico va a ser arriba de 300 millones de pesos y si se hace el libramiento arriba de 800 millones de pesos con eh, capital público privado, que también es, es, es muy importante. Pues, pues, uh, mid with, uh, principal avenida que es la avenida eh, Obregón y que es una demanda también de todos los sanluisinos que saquemos a los camiones de la mancha urbana de nuestra eh, localidad. Aparte también viene un, eh, una termoeléctrica y que ya la anunció el presidente de la república y que el día primero de febrero se tiene la licitación, el resultado de la licitación y en marzo eh, se iniciaría este gran proyecto. Hemos tenido ya algunas pláticas con la gente de Comisión Federal de Electricidad, tanto de Mexicali, Rosarito, Hermosillo y la Ciudad de México, donde nos aseguran de que así será, ¿no? Y que vamos a estar coordinados. Ya tienen algo aventajado con nosotros eh, eh, como ayuntamiento por medio de la Dirección de Desarrollo Urbano y que lo hacemos con mucho, mucho gusto para agilizar y darles el valor agregado que a nosotros eh, nos corresponde. Pero aparte de eso, también viene un eh, seguro social, ¿no? Un eh, hospital sí. similar al que está en Nogales, Sonora, de arriba de 120 camas, con una inversión de 1.500 millones de pesos. Nosotros no tenemos infraestructura hospitalaria en nuestra localidad. Son eh, de los datos duros que carecemos aquí en nuestro municipio. Que sí es cierto, tenemos cerca el condado de Yuma, tenemos cerca este, eh, Mexicali, pero en la, en la localidad no. Esto vendrá a aliviar mucho el problema que se tiene de infraestructura de, bueno. de salud. Podemos eh, presumir de que pues, ya tenemos algunas universidades entre privadas y públicas, de que están, eh, se están eh, manejando y desarrollando bien en toda nuestra región, que también vienen estudiantes del Valle Agrícola de Mexicali, del Valle Agrícola de San Luis, del Golfo de Santa Clara, del de municipio de Plutarco Díaz Calle Sonoita, de Puerto Peñasco, también tenemos estudiantes aquí en las universidades privadas y universidades eh, eh, públicas. Sí, que nos da mucho gusto. Claro que nos hace falta eh, muchas cosas, pero la inversión que se hizo en un año de cerca de 600 millones de pesos, pues nunca se había visto reflejada tanto en la mancha urbana como en el Valle y en el Golfo de Santa Clara. Estamos claro. yendo también a lo que es muy importante, eh, que son los cimientos de las comunidades del Valle Agrícola, porque queremos que sea como antes, ¿no? Eh, bien dicen que nosotros somos la capital de México del dátil, de una especie que es el dátil de Tiol, ¿no? Y que estamos muy contentos y agradecidos con los agricultores que han apoyado esto. Recuerden que nosotros contamos con recursos naturales como es el más importante, el agua, y que viene a ayudarnos también para que se dé un, eh, una buena plantación de lo que es el producto del dátil. Pero aparte de eso, también tenemos otros, eh, otras grandes ventajas, eh, sí, como es el desierto de altar, que se utiliza también para eh, distracción, ¿no? para carreras, para 
eh, eh, ir a, a descubrir nuestro gran desierto de altar y no se diga nuestro Golfo de Santa Clara y lo que es eh, también el Valle Agrícola que no te, tiene problemas eh, ni de maleza ni de eh, animales, ¿no? Como se dice también. Gracias, sí, gracias ¿no? alcalde. Ahorita vamos a tocar los temas de turismo. Con mucho gusto habrá oportunidad de, de hablar más a detalle y aprender sobre lo que ofrece su ciudad y su región para, para ese aspecto. Pero de acuerdo con que hay mucho que aprender y, y desarrollar en el tema aduanero para que la aduana de San Luis Río Colorado sea una aún más próspera. Nos pasamos ahora con Mayor Gerardo Anaya, uh, from Summerton, Arizona. Uh, your city is recognized as one of the safest cities in Arizona, which in turn has resulted in increased confidence for your business community to invest in the region, presenting consumers with the benefit of having a dynamic local economy in which to par participate in. Most notably, the retail and real estate sectors are expected to grow exponentially in the near future because of this renewed confidence. Could you please share more as to what has been behind the economic growth of Somerton and what other cities across the region can learn from your best practices? As mentioned, Somerton is uh, one of the safest cities in Arizona, and that's a contributing factor for attracting businesses and new families to our city. We have a veteran police force of uh, people that grew up here in Somerton. So, and we're still a small community. They know the families by name. So that, that, that's the, one of the reasons for always uh, our low crime. Another key factor is affordable housing. One of our main developers here, it's a nonprofit organization. So we have a good mix of nonprofit homes and for profit. So, that's uh, con uh, contributing to our growth. One of our best practices uh, to attract investors is our flexibility in our permit process. Currently, we are, there's many investors looking at Summerton, which before they didn't look at our city and uh, a lot of the properties that the city owns, we, uh, the city owns a lot of properties in our downtown and is developing a 70 acre commercial property, which is going to be to our new high school. Uh, we are excited. Uh, we were the uh, biggest city in Arizona without a high school. And thanks to, it was a collaborative effort from everybody in our four country region, the mayors, the school boards, and it, everyone. Uh, it We were showing uh, that we needed a high school based on our residents. And, uh, and they, they were good into lobbying uh, the governor and the state to put it in our budget. So we're excited about that. And we are getting a lot of interest in that area around the, the high school and the city owns a lot of the property around. It. And like I said, we are developing that commercial development there. And another you. thing that Somerton is known for is our festivals. We uh, have the Tamale Festival, which is one of the biggest festivals in Arizona. And also, we just started a new festival, the UTV Festival, which it's embracing our Afro culture here in, uh, in Somerton. And we have the Corn Festival, which that also was instrumental, which uh, it's uh, raising funds for the new high school. And uh, so that community and, and that vision, we find our niche in uh, Yuma County as far as promoting uh, Excellent. our culture and our history. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. So, Mayor Cecilia McCullough, a large segment of Welton's population is involved in agriculture and sectors that support the industry, such as trade, services, and marketing. On the other hand, a rapidly growing number of temporary winter residents and retirement communities is positively impacting the local economy. Could you please provide more details on the increasing interest your city has been receiving from seasonal winter residents and the impact that this type of tourism is having on Welton? Do the experiences learned in this field have other possible applications to attract different forms of tourism and talent to your region, especially given the pandemic allowing more people to work remotely? Thank you, thank you. I appreciate being part of this panel and certainly I'm grateful for all of you that are here. 
In terms of the first part of your question, yes, Welton is a very, very attractive community. We're a small town and we're very quiet. We're nestled in the Mohawk Valley. And so we're surrounded by farm ground, which is um, highly desirable to those who are retiring from the Midwest and North parts of the country and even in Canada to enjoy sunshine and lovely weather in the winter. So RV parks, uh, we, we have, I would say, a minimum of six or seven in the area including those that live in the town of Lawton, and they provide a tremendous amount of sales tax revenue for the community, as well as um, those that come to play golf, which was the primary um, reason most of them came, was to play golf. We have two golf courses here that attract them as well. Um, um, do they experience, okay, sorry, I'm trying to read the, the note. One of the things that happened with with COVID was everything pretty much shut down. The, the golf course is shut down, the, the business is shut down, but the town itself continued and had to continue with services. So I think that they were describing the, the town staff coming and going, not staying together and some working remotely part-time. Um, it, it took a tremendous amount of of effort and, and certain um, prayers that brought back the winter visitors this year. So we're looking forward to coming out of the depressed time for the town of Welton and starting to thrive. The golf courses are doing very well. And we have a tremendous uh, influx of uh, highway vehicles that are starting to do their big group activities. So much of that is part of what Walton um, attracts in terms of winter visitors. And our goal is to start promoting younger demographics to participate in some of the activities as well. Thank you, Mayor. I would then like to pass on to, uh, related to the COVID-19 pandemic, to our second part of our dialogue and ask Ingeniero Victor Hugo Delgado, if you are on the call, uh, to, to answer, el proyecto de rescate del Centro Histórico de Mexicali, conocido como Yo por mi Centro, es toda una realidad. ¿Cómo ha ayudado a reactivar la economía local, especialmente la actividad de las pymes, en época de pandemia? Sí, buenas, buenas, buenas tardes de nuevo. Eh, mira, el, 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 el proyecto del Centro Histórico es un proyecto que sigue adelante, eh, que, que ha ido creciendo se ha ido, ha ido madurando, de hecho se ha estado trabajando en, en, en muchos de los factores que, tienen, que tenemos ahí. Eh, tan es así que hace el día de ayer ya fue declarada inclusive como una delegación separada eh, como parte de su actividad propia eh, de comercio, turismo y servicios. Eso es con el fin de darle más, más fuerza y empuje a la zona del Centro Histórico de Mexicali. Y esto ha dado por, en los últimos tiempos, eh, y como tú lo, bien lo mencionas, en los tiempos de la pandemia, pues fue una situación complicada, sobre todo para el comercio y servicio. Ahorita como ciudad nosotros estamos dedicados fuertemente a darle el apoyo necesario a las pymes, porque es, es, es la parte fuerte eh, económicamente hablando de, de las ciudades como la de nosotros, en el que del 60 al 70% de la economía, están constituidas por los comercios y servicios. Y esa es la gran parte del centro histórico. Por ende, el gobierno de Mexicali, a través de nuestra presidenta Norma Bustamante, eh, nos ha dado la instrucción de trabajar fuertemente y apoyar a todo lo que se refiere a comercio y servicio constituido dentro del centro histórico. Y eso nos ha dado la oportunidad de que este proyecto siga creciendo. Y, y eh, especialmente por el área de turismo. La, eh, ustedes, es, eh, aquellos que hayan tenido la oportunidad de poderlos visitar, eh, ustedes estarán viendo de los últimos, últimos años al día de hoy. El centro histórico se ha convertido en un centro de turismo y comercio muy importante para la ciudad. Y nosotros tenemos la consigna de seguir apoyando para que este proyecto siga creciendo. Asimismo, el, el apoyo de las pymes. Una de las una de las partes importantes que tenemos como gobierno, que es la gestión, tenemos que seguir trabajando, apoyándolos a ellos para poder asegurar que su crecimiento se siga dando y, se siga, y siga aportando 
al desarrollo económico de la ciudad. Excelente. Muchas gracias, ingeniero. Uh, I would like to also welcome Mayor Cheryl Viegas Walker, who is just joining us. Uh, from what I understand, you are in a different uh, Zoom link. And so finally, you are here with us, Mayor. Uh, we're going to go on with your question on uh, sustainability. There are recent initiatives going on at a global level, uh, most notably the COP26's Race to Zero Emissions by 2050, uh, President Biden's Build Back Better plan, which have placed a unique focus on the role that local governments play uh, in combating climate change, along with businesses. Could you please share more about what your city is doing to accelerate clean energy transition, how it benefits your community and businesses investing in, in your city, as well as the efforts that are undertaken in Imperial County to implement a binational clean energy uh, effort. Great, thank you so much. And I appreciate being let out of time out after, um, <laughs> after that period of time, you're doing an awesome job as a facilitator and moderator. Um, I think that there's probably four things that we're really looking to do here within Imperial County to address climate change, which we know is, is a very, very real threat to everything that we're trying to accomplish, whether it's economic development, infrastructure, tourism, education. Foundationally, we have to be addressing climate change. So I think the four things that we're looking to do here is a very comprehensive plan for active transportation. We need to get people out of their cars So we want to be um, making sure that our, our cities are walkable, that we are planning for safer connected bike paths and safe routes to school, and that we're also citing new housing development near transit. Just again, with that focus on getting people out of their cars. The second thing is that we're being very proactive with transitioning municipal vehicles and our bus fleets. Um, from uh, gas-powered engines to electric vehicles. That's, that's just mission critical. Then coming on the, on the heels of that, the third thing that we're looking to do is plan for a comprehensive regional solution and system of charging stations. We all have anxiety. We get into our electric vehicles and it's 120 degrees outside. We need to make sure that we feel comfortable and confident that we're going to be able to make it from point A to point B and, and not be stranded. So planning for that regional system of charging stations is critical. Uh, the last thing, of course, within Imperial County, a lot of headlines lately about this supply chain and lithium extraction and being part of that um, transition. And the way we transition our fleet to electric vehicles, of course, is coming up with Um, that lithium that's used in the manufacturing of, of the batteries. So with regard to the mega region and how I think that we can benefit, I, I think we should be engaged in conversations right now on how do we develop and plan for and site that uh, charging stations so that we can continue as a region to build out a system uh, that's going to be sustainable for our population. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and on that last and final point, it's important to note that Sonora has a, a large lithium uh, facility, the, the largest in the world, and it's right on our border and can help in, in that clean energy transition for the, the, the initiatives that your city has undertaken and hopefully other mayors do as well. Uh, now, going on and to ask Mayor Jerry Sanchez, The pandemic has led, uh, if, if uh, yes, Jerry Sanchez, the pandemic has led many people, unfortunately, to lose their jobs. However, it also presents an opportunity for them to start their own businesses. As a result, your city has benefited largely due to the fact that it has its own business incubator. Can you please share with us more details on the state of entrepreneurship and innovation in San Luis and what resources are available for them to succeed? such as training, investment, and networking. How can larger businesses, neighboring cities, and academic institutions contribute to this municipal project? Thank you, Victor. I appreciate that. I was on mute here real quick. One of the things that the city has been doing, unfortunately, the pandemic uh, has caused a lot of unemployment. Uh, there's, uh, for example, uh, there's, there were 120 
of our business license were not renewed or basically canceled during this period of 18 months. So it, it really made a big difference in the impact. For us, a small town like us, 120 business license means that's 120 businesses that closed or uh, decided to go somewhere else. So that in itself created unemployment, but the city is working hard and is working uh, diligently, uh, especially with our incubator. The business incubator was funded with Federal Economic Development Administration, EDA, State Arizona uh, Housing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Arizona Department of Housing and local funds close to $2.3 million. It, the city incubator is a business incubator is a 20,000 square foot facility located in industrial park the business incubator has seven suites ranging from 1430 to 4,237 square foot for startup and expanding your business. The uh, San Luis provides hands-on management assistance, access to financing, and exposure to critical business and technical uh, support. Uh, the San Luis business incubator also offers uh, shared office space, individual office space, access to office equipment, flexible and expensive leases, and it's expandable all under one roof. We are currently working with partnership uh, with academic institutions to provide more businesses training and, and also more businesses opportunities. Through the forefront of promoting the business incubator in San Luis, Colorado and in Mexicali to recruit entrepreneurs focus in expanding their markets to the US and uh, work with larger businesses in providing warehouses space as they expand their business need. Right now, we currently have three companies from Mexico a medical equipment provider, agriculture and sign installation, along with three other local startup uh, companies focusing on construction, refrigeration, and technology equipment. So the city, for, uh, the, if you want to start your own business, if you are from, for example, Mexicali or Salero Corrado, and they want, you want to go into expand to the U.S. market, this would be a good startup opportunity. Wherever we're, we're actually we're able to offer very affordable rent for you to expand or start the process. So the city facilitates all that. And the thing is, we are a resource and that's a key thing to success. Education success like Mexicali. Mexicali did the right thing. They focus on education. They, they focus on vocational training, makes, makes, making them very competitive. And the thing is, we're in that same process. We're at the starting, the starting phase. Uh, I think Mexicali was a very, very long away. But the thing is, we look at the model Mexicali has done, and it's been successful. And I commend Mexicali for doing that, for Baja California. And the thing is, we will continue working. And this incubator, it may be small, but it actually offers a lot of benefits for, for small businesses or entrepreneurs that want to expand their businesses. So we're using our resources. Uh, we, we have very talented work, working for us and our staff that are willing to do and, and willing to work uh, with new businesses, new startups. And we will continue doing so throughout this pandemic. Uh, and so um, that's a small token of what the city of San Luis is doing and will continue doing for our community. Thank you very much, Mayor. And touching on the collaboration between the private and public sector to confront the pandemic, I would like to ask the panelists uh, an open question. Uh, how has your community responded to the pandemic's effects? Uh, how has your city been impacted in its regional health infrastructure and economy? And what are some examples of the private sector and public sector working together to mitigate these risks and uh, health effects that the pandemic has brought about our region? Kenero Delgado and Mayor uh, Javier Moreno. Sí, muy, eh, buenas tardes. Eh, cuando pas hemos, bueno, desde el momento en que empezamos a pasar toda esta situación de la pandemia, nos dimos a la tarea, eh, gobierno y ciudad y comunidad, a, a apoyar todas las actividades referentes a la situación eh, de, de salud que, que existía o que existe en la ciudad. Eh, estamos hablando de por ahí del 2020, cuando empezamos con esta situación complicada. Eh, Mexicali, dentro del estado de Baja California, fue una de las ciudades que demostró eh, como comunidad su participación con el gobierno tanto gobierno del estado como gobierno local de Mexicali, eh, de una forma muy, ex, muy extrema eh, en el punto de vista del apoyo que se vino de parte del sector, del sector privado. Eh, fue una, un trabajo en conjunto de, de ciudad, gobierno eh, y comunidad, y eso nos ayudó mucho para poder dar la oportunidad de, de darle el apoyo necesario al sector salud que en ese momento lo requeríamos. Hasta este momento y hasta la fecha, 
eh, Mexicali se ha reconocido por el apoyo como comunidad, eh, en la cual se volcó muy fuertemente eh, hacia, la, hacia los centros de, de apoyo en la salud. Y hasta la fecha, como lo comento, ha seguido, ha seguido su trabajo. Eh, por ello, como gobierno, nosotros reconocemos a la comunidad de Mexicali, a los empresarios de Mexicali, porque en los momentos en que realmente los necesitamos, aquí estuvieron, y, y hasta la fecha, hasta este momento, el, la comunidad se ha volcado a seguir apoyando a los sectores de salud, y de esta manera yo creo que fue una parte importante de que el, el sector salud apoyó a, la, a su comunidad para, para, para que este trabajo o esta situación de la pandemia puede, pudiera sí. salir adelante. Muchas gracias, ingeniero. Gracias. Eh, muchas gracias. Uh, Mayor Anaya and Mayor Moreno, I see your hands raised. Would any of you like to uh, make a comment? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, we've been, we've been on this fight since obviously day one, right? And so we work, we continue to work with the um, public health department in Imperial County. And so make sure everybody gets their, uh, all their um, the information, the outreach. Uh, we work with uh, nonprofits as well, uh, the, obviously the hospitals. Uh, we do have a population that lives, that resides in Mexico for economic reasons. We're also doing outreach with them, uh, especially the, uh, as government, um, we make sure the, all the information is passed out there and make sure everybody's is getting vaccinated. <clears throat> Along with the uh, port of entry with CBP, we do have monthly meetings to address those issues at Seattle Porter. Um, so it won't become a, <clears throat> an issue later down the road. And <clears throat> basically the community of Mexico and community in Pearl County for that matter had worked hand in hand and, And even though we, <clears throat> at one point, were the highest in, in the state, but <clears throat> the numbers seem to um, seem to remain uh, with a new variant. You know, obviously, we're we're looking into new measures how we uh, address those things. But we do work with with nonprofit medical clinics, uh, with the community, uh, with Heffern and he Healthcare District. Um, we have a Dr. Vo in town that does an excellent job in doing mitigating that. Uh, he's busy also doing that. Colexico Wellness Center, uh, also. Uh, and all the doctors, local doctors. And it, it's very important that I mention that because it's important that we understand the community uh, and the needs. Uh, the culture here with, with Imperial County, actually in Calexico, is very unique um, from El Centro or Brawley. Uh, <clears throat> they're, um, they're not resilient, but they're, they're uh, as you know, they're hardworking uh, families. So a lot of outreach and information for them so they can get vaccinated. They continue, you know, practice social distancing. They get checked periodically. Uh, it's, it's been really uh, challenging, but we passed that, that hump already. So the community is already um, uh, taking note of that, that we care about their health and we want to have a healthy community. Um, so right. we're, we're continuing in the, in the cost. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Anaya. One of the mayor effects, I think it was our communication with our businesses. Uh, when um, this started, they played a key role in helping to enforce the ordinances and uh, The CDC guidelines. It was um, we had we were meeting with them constantly and and communicating with them. And another thing with the care site funding that we got, we gave small business grants to all of our businesses that I applied. So we distributed those federal funds uh, to our businesses that were struggling. So uh, I, I felt you know technology, but the the, the business paid, paid, paid a, a, it was key. And also we have uh, two clinics that were uh, having the testing and now that we have the vaccine available, we have vaccination clinics, uh, the city assists with them, our fire department assists with it. And it's not just for Somerton residents, it's for, for all of Yuma County. And we become a, a hub for vaccines and testing and, and, uh, it's, and still, it's still happening here in the city. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Sanchez, would you like to also add to this uh, issue? There we go. Yes, of course. Uh, I just want to say that I'm very proud of our community. Our community has stepped up from day one. We were very aggressive. We we're the first community to enact uh, the uh, the face uh, face mask requirement. Uh, two hours later, after the governor, our governor signed the okay for us to mandate. Uh, we were the first community to actually do so. And we were actually the last community to actually release that or actually right now we're in the process of modifying that right now. And uh, we've, been, we've been very fortunate. Our community has stepped up to the plate. Talk about stepping up to the plate. We continue having on the average less numbers per positive per in Yuma County 
as a whole. So, so that speaks volumes and we're right next to our border. And the thing is that just tells you that this virus is not about people across, across our lines. It's about the virus being worldwide. It's a worldwide situation. We, we've been able to control the numbers. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose one of our uh, wastewater management uh, person uh, very talented, very, 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 for many years. He was, he was not probably one of the best. That was one of the major loss, but we were able, we only have one police station, one fire station. We were able to maintain them. The, the, the level of service is amazing. Our goal was we only have Yuma Regional Medical Center as the main hospital. So for, for us, it was our goal to make sure we we're, we were aggressive enough, but, but then again, education is key. And also, uh, the city of San Luis have had 14 vaccinations clinics since day one. And the thing is, and we will continue vaccinating uh, our, our residents and offering the first, second, and third doses. And we're also, we were, we're at a point we're offering vaccination, every vaccine available for pediatrics also. We were taking advantage of everything. So I am very, 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 we were very fortunate. And the thing is, working with our counterparts across the border, we will continue doing vaccination clinics, which makes a big difference. There's a reason why our numbers have been low in, in the city of San Luis. And Thank that's because we've been very aggressive. So I'm very proud of them. I'm just, I just had to say it. Thank you. Thank you. No, great comments. And actually on that level, uh, on the collaboration that you have had with San Luis Rio Colorado with binational vaccination clinics, is exactly what I want to ask Alcalde Santos Gonzalez. Ha sido todo un éxito los esfuerzos compartidos de vacunación transfronteriza entre la ciudad de San Luis Rio Colorado y San Luis Arizona, la cual coordina el Consulado de México en Yuma, Arizona, en colaboración con las autoridades aduaneras de Estados Unidos y México, el ayuntamiento que usted preside, el Departamento de Salud del Condado de Yuma, el Regional Center for Border Health, la Universidad de Arizona, entre otras agencias. ¿Qué nos pudiera decir, alcalde, sobre las experiencias ganadas y lo que se presenta en oportunidades para más colaboración binacional y transfronteriza en futuros esfuerzos como la certificación de trabajadores, actividades y empresas esenciales, así como la atracción de turismo e inversiones. Nosotros estamos muy agradecidos eh, con principal, a, a mucha gente se involucró en este, pero principalmente el promotor eh, este que nos apoyó siempre es eh, el cónsul de México Yuma, el señor Larios, ¿verdad? Claro que también con el apoyo de Amanda Aguirre, de Tony Reyes, del mayor Gerardo Sánchez, o sea, que nos estuvieron apoyando, y desde luego que las dos aduanas eh, mexicanas. Nosotros fuimos un ejemplo nacional, principalmente las vacunas para jóvenes de 12 a 17 años, y que ya aplicamos eh, las dos vacunas que les corresponde a 2,000 jóvenes, que fueron de toda la comunidad. Esta se había hecho, me parece que en Coahuila y en Nuevo León o Tamaulipas, no recuerdo, fueron dos estados de la frontera donde ellos fueron específicos para empleados de maquiladoras. Aquí no, aquí fue para el público en general y que ordenadamente con la colaboración de Canacinta eh, ellos nos registraban eh, a la gente, pero aparte también se hizo para mucha gente de comercio, de la industria, empresarios, ¿sí? y de que alcanzamos ya con los jóvenes y con estos eh, que les menciono, cerca de 6.000 eh, vacunas, que ojalá continuemos con este programa binacional tan importante. Esto también se realizó en Tijuana, pero les fue cobrado a las, a las empresas, ¿no? Me parece 40 o 60 dólares por cada vacuna, que nosotros no se tuvo la necesidad esa. Esa ha sido la colaboración de todos, ¿no? De que cada uno pone su granito de arena y que hemos salido a, adelante, a pesar de que como siempre hemos comentado de que nosotros estamos en un punto estratégico privilegiado, ¿no? En el noroeste de México, en el noroeste de nuestro, nuestro estado de Sonora, donde está un Baja California con Mexicali como capital y que eh, es de los estados más importantes hablando en la cuestión financiera, económica, política y social. ¿sí? Lo mismo con el condado de Yuma. Yo estoy consciente de que eh, lo que es la franja fronteriza norte con la sur de Estados Unidos es la cuarta economía mundial, y así lo dicen los expertos, después de China, Estados Unidos, Estados Unidos, China, Europa. Esta es muy importante y creo que nosotros 
debemos de aprovechar en todos los aspectos. En el turismo, claro que también nos hace falta y hemos estado trabajando. Nosotros tenemos eh, dos eh, direcciones, eh, una para municipal como es OPRODE, que es un organismo de promoción y desarrollo económico, que aquí está su titular, Espalda Mía, que es eh, eh, nuestro amigo Mario Guevara, ¿sí? y también tenemos a lo que es turismo y desarrollo eh, económico que están haciendo su trabajo. San Luis Río Colado tiene muchos atractivos, aparte de la cuestión del látil, está el Golfo de Santa Clara, en el Valle Agrícola también tenemos atractivos que no hemos explotado adecuadamente y que es, eh, de, proceden de muchos, de muchos eh, este, años y que nuestros antiguos dejaron su huella por estos, por estos lugares y tendremos nosotros como municipio que desarrollar ahora en nuestra segunda administración y que casi nos quedan tres años para este, trabajar también en lo que es la, el fomento de turismo. Eh, tuvimos recientemente un festival que se llama Festival Tierra Sonora y que fue su sexta edición y que nosotros llevamos de las seis, tres ediciones. Ha sido el más exitoso, con mucha gente, vino gente del Condado de Yuma, de Mexicali y de toda la región, de Puerto Peñasco, Sonoita, y no se diga de aquí del, del municipio. Tuvimos de los cuatro días eh, el inicio y el final, eh, pues eh, se, eh, las expectativas quedaron rebasadas totalmente. Estamos trabajando sobre todo eso. Muchas gracias. Muchas, muchas gracias, alcalde. Y, y por cierto, como ya lo mencionaste, te felicito por tu reelección. Uno de los pocos alcaldes en la región que fue reelegido. Y ese es un eh, logro en sí mismo, que es una muestra de su trabajo y de su compromiso con su ciudad. Gracias. Ahora, con gusto. Me paso a la siguiente eh, video corto sobre el turismo en esta región eh, binacional de Forefront TD. The Forefront ED binational mega region is powerful. The mega region's population is 1.65 million. The mega region's population is equal to Phoenix, greater than San Antonio, greater than San Diego, greater than Dallas, and half of Baja California. The Forefront ED mega region has a gross domestic product of $95 billion. It is part of the fifth largest economy in the world. It offers immediate access to a market of 53 million consumers. The mega region has several international airports. The most active are located in Yuma, Arizona and Mexicali, Baja California. The mega region has 48 industrial parks. The mega region also has 28 universities and two colleges. Thank you very much for that video. Uh, now, I want to have a short dialogue on the impact that travel restrictions for non-essential travelers have had between the US, Mexico, and Canada, of course. Uh, Mayor McCullough, now that the restrictions for non-essential tourists have been lifted from the US-Mexico border, what are the opportunities for the tourism industry and local businesses in this regard? Yes, we have seen uh, an influx of winter visitors that started coming about a month ago, and we're continuing to see them come in on a regular basis. Our, our, um, our golf courses are, are up uh, from the last two years in a tremendous amount so that we're hopeful that it'll recover our losses from last year. But for the most part, we have visitors from Canada, Northern, the United, the Northern United States and Eastern United States and even um, new residents from California that are starting to utilize the rural community and using the off highway vehicles to entertain themselves and find um, things to do, even though we don't have a lot of activities here. But we're very, very grateful for the restrictions being dropped because it's benefited our town tremendously. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Viegas Walker, what are some of the plans uh, in your city to reestablish the region's tourism industry? 
Thank you so much. Um, the border restrictions were devastating for our economy. Um, much of our retail is based on a 60% uh, influx of shoppers from, from Mexico. And so for our retail in particular, that was just absolutely devastating. Um, so we are looking to, to ramp up uh, now that the restrictions are, we hope, permanent in terms of, of opening up the border. Uh, as, as the former speaker was saying, making our community attractive and safe for our snowbirds. So people from Minnesota and Canada feel like they want to get out of the cold and come in and uh, you know, enjoy four or five months here in the beautiful weather, opening up our sand dunes, of course, and uh, just looking for opportunities to reactivate our economy, both in terms of tourism and, and retail and um, highlighting our restaurants and the opportunities that um, for really good food are available here within Imperial County. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, estamos hablando sobre las oportunidades que hay ya que la región ha restablecido los cruces para turistas no esenciales. Hay una variedad de oportunidades, no nomás en el cruce de personas no esenciales, sino también en la importancia que se le ha dado a nivel internacional a la frontera entre México y Estados Unidos. Esta publicidad que se le ha dado a la región seguramente traerá varias oportunidades si nuestras ciudades en la región se organizan y buscan colaborar a futuro. Eh, para nuestros alcaldes en México, ¿cuáles son las oportunidades que están viendo en cuanto a la facilitación de comercio, facilitación en el proceso aduaneros y cruce de gente, bienes, así como capital en nuestras fronteras? De igual forma, ¿cómo se está trabajando para promover eh, turismo, inversiones, en estas ciudades como Mexicali y San Luis Río Colorado. Finalmente, ¿cómo es la mejor forma desde la perspectiva mexicana para avanzar en lo que se ha convertido en un tema tan importante para Estados Unidos y Canadá, que es la frontera con México? Adelante, Santos. Sí, eh, yo pienso que somos mayoría estoy más bien plenamente seguro que somos mayoría los que estamos de acuerdo en la reapertura para viajes no esenciales entre eh, San Luis y el condado de Yuma, pasando por eh, San Luis, eh, Arizona. Eh, para nosotros, eh, lo que eh, es, eh, lo, mientras no estuvo abierto, fue una gran oportunidad o se hizo una oportunidad para el comercio local en aprovechar. Y creo que ya, tuvieron, eh, que ya tuvimos esa oportunidad, pero también estamos conscientes de que hay mucha gente que depende de los productos que se venden en Estados Unidos para vender, venirlos aquí a, 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 este, a revender en nuestra comunidad o en, la, o en la región. Los que aprovecharon, pues qué bueno. Los que no han aprovechado, pues tendremos que eh, nosotros apoyarlos, ¿verdad? Al menos en un proceso de enseñanza-aprendizaje de que deben de estar en la nueva realidad donde necesitamos absolutamente todos, ¿verdad? Tenemos que estar unidos, coordinados y solidarios como lo hemos hecho hasta, hasta este momento, ¿no? Entonces, eh, hay que seguir trabajando eh, en lo que es con la gente y principalmente con los grupos organizados como es Canacintra, Canaco, Coparmex, que están aquí en la, en la localidad y también hay una... Eh, este, un apoyo de Mexicali por medio de, de, de Index, de lo que es las, la industria de la maquiladora, la educación, ¿no? Entonces tendremos que estar trabajando eh, mucho, mucho con, con ellos. Pero yo quiero agregar esto de que en, eh, en cuando teníamos la pandemia para no, eh, y que estaba en su punto más alto, para que no hubiera una crisis o un problema social aquí en nuestra comunidad, nosotros como municipio le invertimos 25 millones de pesos en, en estar apoyando a la gente en recursos en efectivo y también eh, vía apoyos para el pago de energía eléctrica, principalmente en los meses picos que son los de, los de verano, ¿no? Y que lo hicimos con mucho gusto. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Sin duda se ocupa 
una organización de varias frentes. Por eso también le quiero pasar la palabra al ingeniero Delgado, que entiendo ha sido partícipe de grupos eh, empresariales como es Index en Mexicali. Y nos pudieras decir de, de tu experiencia de, eh, eh, al frente de grupos empresariales y el papel que tiene eso y desde luego ahora el papel viéndolo del sector público también. Sí, mire, eh, definit definitivamente que el, la participación de los sectores eh, productivos en, el, en los tiempos de la pandemia fue definitivamente importante y, y tuve la oportunidad de poder participar en uno de ellos. Creo que el sector de, de exportación participó muy fuertemente en su momento eh, para la situación que estuvimos experimentando. Pero ahora como gobierno que, que se me dio la oportunidad eh, de trabajar y apoyar a la comunidad de Mexicali, creo que el trabajo que tenemos que hacer la comunidad de Mexicali, así como la comunidad del Valle Imperial y Yuma y San Luis Río Colorado, es, eh, se está demostrando a través de las voluntades de que estamos eh, teniendo y, y una de ellas es el hecho de tener la oportunidad de poder estar eh, en este momento platicando de nuestras actividades propias de la, del desarrollo económico y turista de, de, la ciudad, de las ciudades. Y Mexicali no es, eh, no es ajeno a esta situación, al contrario, yo creo que esta apertura de... de, de de viajes no esenciales que se, se presentó semanas atrás, eh, es una parte importante de la vida económica de, de, de nuestra región. Y definitivamente que todo el mundo estábamos esperando que se diera. Eh, este trabajo de desarrollo económico pues, se presenta en, en de apoyo mutuo de entre, entre la comunidad de nosotros y, por ejemplo, la comunidad de, de Caléxico y el centro. Y, y el hecho de tener este tipo de apertura en viajes no esenciales provoca también un apoyo económico que, que también como comunidad mexicana se debe de dar hacia el norte. Pero también es importante el hecho de aprovechar este tipo de actividades, porque bien lo decía la mayor del centro, eh, el, el trabajo que tenemos que hacer nosotros de, de, en, en el desarrollo económico del turi y el turismo entre las, entre las diferentes ciudades tiene que, se, tiene que darse con un apoyo mutuo. Eh, y así lo estamos viendo ahorita. El, el, estamos trabajando fuertemente en el área de turismo, porque hay un turismo que, que se presenta en estas fechas, sobre todo. El, el, los snowbirds que vienen en, es, en estos tiempos, pues es importante aprovecharlos para poderle dar el apoyo que se necesita. Porque ahora es cuando, ahora es cuando tenemos que aprovechar, después de 18 meses que estuvimos experimentando situaciones complicadas, Creo yo que es el momento de trabajar en conjunto y en equipo para poder eh, desarrollar la economía y es a través del turismo, a través del turismo eh, que nos puede demostrar en el área de los restaurantes, en el área del comercio, en el área del servicio. Y ahora es cuando tenemos que aprovechar en conjunto la ciudad del centro, la ciudad de Calex, la ciudad de Yuma, la ciudad de San Luis, para poder detonar eh, muchas de las actividades que en los últimos 18 meses no pudimos hacer. Entonces, eh, nosotros como gobierno de Mexicali estamos con toda la disposición de trabajar en conjunto de la mano de esta región, porque eh, es el momento ahorita en este que se está presentando para poder activar la economía, que yo creo que tenemos que seguir trabajando para que vuelva a los, a los tiempos o más que tuvimos hace algunos meses atrás. Excelente. Muchas gracias. Gracias, ingeniero. Uh, now, uh, the final question I would like to ask as an open-ended question for, for our participants is, how has uh, the region grown over the past 30 years since the NAFTA was originally signed? And there was a focus on an exchange of goods, information, people through a, a trilateral uh, lens. Uh, and now with the signing of the USMCA, what opportunities present themselves? And this is a, a question that comes from our Q&A section from Olune Oluwalo, uh, who asked this question regarding the impact that NAFTA and USMCA have in this binational region. Anybody would like to uh, take a, a stab at this question? Mayor Villegas Walker? So I think that all of us have been uh, watching with grave concern about the supply chain issues uh, that have been occurring within California on the, the, our, our cargo ports. And I think that that just emphasizes 
the opportunities of, of NAFTA and, and I'm going to call it NAFTA 2.0 in looking at this region in particular as being um, providing the opportunity for the supply chain to service all three, all three countries. And I, I think that just today highlights the collaborative commitments that all of us have to making this region successful with the greater goal that I think could impact um, all three, Canada, US and, and Mexico with regard to the supply chain. And so I, I think that it's an unprecedented opportunity for us to continue to build on our success and our collaboration. So it's very, very exciting time. Yes, uh, on that end, Mayor, we have uh, ports of Ensenada and Guaymas close to the region. Uh, and there's an opportunity to attract more investment to come closer to home and not abroad in Asia or Europe. And so it's a good point that you bring up. Uh, Ingeniero Delgado. Eh, sí, como bien lo dice la mayor de, de Centro Walker, um, ahorita es el momento importante que tenemos que aprovechar este nuevo tratado que estamos, estamos, con el que estamos trabajando porque hay una, una gran, gran oportunidad de desarrollo económico y yo creo que 2022 va a marcar la diferencia que, para el desarrollo y el, y este, de la actividad económica en esta mega región. Creo que, eh, no, no, me, no lo negaré, pero tenemos una infraestructura importante que inclusive lo podemos comparar con mejores, mejores condiciones que la costa, de, por ejemplo, en el estado de Baja California. La, esta mega región ahorita es el momento importante para detonarla porque tenemos la infraestructura importante, los recursos necesarios y estamos hablando de recursos desde la energía, agua, este tren, eh, los puertos fronterizos en una condición que nunca lo habíamos visto y que lo vamos a ver en mejores condiciones. Entonces yo creo que, que es el momento importante para que todos trabajemos en equipo y poder aprovechar las oportunidades que esta mega región en, sus, en su infraestructura tiene para poder aprovechar este 2022, que creo yo que va a marcar la diferencia económicamente hablando de aquí adelante. Totalmente de acuerdo. Este año que viene va a ser fundamental y es una ventana de oportunidad que se nos está presentando como región inigualable que no hemos visto desde los noventas. Esperemos que sea uno que detone la inversión y que venga a beneficiar eh, el, el bienestar de nuestras familias, eh, desde luego de nuestras comunidades también. Eh, anybody else would like to say a comment? ¿Algún otro comentario para cerrar antes de, de pasar a la conclusión? Alcalde Santos González. Sí, yo pienso que esta tercera lección del Tratado Libre de Comercio es la mejor. Y yo pienso que pues tenemos a un presidente como el presidente López Obrador visionario. Él sabe la importancia de la frontera. Por eso le está invirtiendo a la frontera. Sí, desde el 2019, cuando iniciaron los programas de mejoramiento urbano, porque él se fue más adelante y dice, si no vamos a estar en las condiciones de eh, los... Eh, fronteras de Estados Unidos, pues al menos vamos a mejorar nuestra infraestructura y estructura que tenemos en el en, en este en este lado y así lo he demostrado y así yo también este lo, lo visualizo el crecimiento que se dio exponencial hace algunos años de San Luis en la cuestión de la agricultura ahora ya se empieza a ver también en la industria que después de los de 80 se fueron muchas empresas y empiezan a regresar aquí con la oportunidad que tenemos nosotros de todos los recursos naturales y también de infraestructura que nos va a, que nos va a llegar. Esa sería mi participación. Muchas gracias, alcalde. Mayor Sánchez, would you like to say a comment? Yes, I just want to say that originally my town, for example, when, when the initial NAFTA was signed, I think it was a catalyst for our growth. And the thing is, over the last less than 10 years, uh, we've, we've doubled in size and population. So now that we have a new NAFTA treaty, uh, um, I, I see our population doubling in size also within the next eight years. That's the projection. So um, when, when, when you talk about working with Mexico, Canada, when you're talking about people wanting a uh, job opportunity, I think this will create a lot of job opportunities, especially in the border regions. And the thing is, but it also affects the interior part of Mexico, of the U.S. and Canada also. So for us, when the NAFTA deal was was finally finally done, 
Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, we're, I see a projection of a population, and that just is just it's very healthy for the for our population, and that just proves that working together makes a big difference. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, it's impressive to see that fun fact of how fast San Luis has grown and the projections that come with it. Uh, and obviously, there are a ton of opportunities in real estate and construction, infrastructure investments that need to be made uh, for that region. So it, it'll be very exciting to have the same conversation in eight, 10 years and yeah. see how much has changed. Exactly. Thank you. Well, uh, th Mayor McCullough, if you have any closing remarks. Actually, I just, am, I don't know if it was on so over, I apologize, I had a phone call, but I'm very, very grateful for the collaboration that's here today. I think getting to know one another, as Mayor Nichols talked about at the beginning of the session, I would certainly like to invite the fellow mayors to come visit here to Welton uh, and show them around, but I'd also like to include myself in an invitation to visit all of you. I think one of those things that just uh, remedies, confusion, and lack of information is relationships. And so I really would appreciate that. And my gratitude to the fellow mayors that I work with, uh, because they're the best gentlemen ever. So, and thank you as well, Victor, you did a very good job. <laughs> thank you. Uh, now for, for our closing, I would like to pass the microphone over to Nasser, who will give us a, a closing statement. Thank you, Victor. Um, mayors, thank you so much for agreeing to participate um, in today's panel. We really appreciate it. Thank you um, very much to all your team members uh, for the support and guidance. Victor, uh, you have done a great job moderating this panel. Thank you so much for that. Without a doubt, uh, your binational and professional experience uh, has contributed uh, enormously, enormously to this, this event. A nuestras ciudades hermanas de San Luis Río Colorado en Sonora, en el bello Sonora, Mexicali en Baja California, gracias alcaldes por participar, por darse este tiempo al, al ingeniero Víctor Hugo, gracias por estar en representación de la alcaldesa Norma Bustamante. Ha sido un placer tenerlos en este panel virtual, la segunda edición. Esperamos que la tercera edición pueda ser ya en persona con todos ustedes, todo su equipo y las comunidades que serían invitadas, obviamente. Su experiencia en las diferentes áreas han contribuido enormemente al eh, éxito de este evento. Y eh, quiero dar las gracias nuevamente en nombre de todos los miembros de la mesa directiva de Fall for Me por participar hoy. Sigamos trabajando en equipo, juntos somos más fuertes. Let's keep working together. Gracias nuevamente a todos. Víctor, te paso el micrófono para despedirnos. Muchas gracias, Nasser. Eh, muchas gracias a todos que nos acompañan. Eh, ahí ya tienen la información de Forefront ID para obtener más información de cómo participar, colaborar con la región. Thank you very much to everybody that joined us today. And as Nasser mentioned, together the region is, is closer, we're stronger. And there's a lot of opportunities for us to work together. The next year, 2023-2022, brings a ton of opportunities for Mexico and the United States and Canada to grow. And it's exciting that this forum exists for that to happen. So thank you for everybody that joined us. We'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias.